Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie and today we'll be talking about how to choose the right floors for every room in your home. This is a very hot topic. I've been getting a lot of comments on how to help you choose flooring from your kitchen to your living room, your bathrooms and beyond. The good news is that there are thousands of options available for you on the market today to suit your style and budget. The bad news is there are literally thousands of materials available for you so I know you get overwhelmed and probably frustrated in your search. In this this video, I will break down the top 10 most popular hard flooring types so you find your perfect match. Before we get started, please take a moment to like this video, give it a thumbs up if this content has been helping you. Please comment below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Today's choices in flooring are more varied than ever, so I'll be breaking down the key characteristics of each type, give you the pros and cons, breaking down the cost of material including the cost of installation, and lastly I'll be talking about the types of flooring that I frequently most specify for my own clients. Hardwood flooring is a traditional favorite. Most people love it for its durability and natural beauty. Oak is the most popular choice, but other woods like maple, cherry, black walnut, and imported exotic woods like Brazilian cherry are available on the market today. Hardwood floors come in a variety of styles, including plank, parquet, and pre-finished boards that you can install yourself. Standard planks are about two to four inches wide, but if you have a larger space, specify a larger plank so it feels more proportionate to the size of your space. Nowadays, new technology provides coatings for pre-finished hardwood with additives that produce incredibly tough surfaces that are super durable. The pros is that there is a variety of hardwood available on the market today. The variety of hardwoods blend with so many styles of interior design, and I especially love it for an open concept floor plan so that there is a continuous flooring throughout the home. In an open concept floor plan, you'll have that visual continuity, so there's no transitions, there's no line breaks, and it actually makes the space seem larger. Another pro is that it could be refinished many times over its lifetime. You can stain it, you can paint it, you can sand it down and refinish it to any new color you like. One of the cons is that solid hardwood is nailed to the subfloor, so it's not easy if you want to change it out. You would have to demolish the entire floor and prep it for a new floor if you want to switch it out. Since it's a solid wood, it's not impervious to temperature and climate changes. Water, heat, and humidity can warp the wood, so if you're installing the hardwood in an area with high humidity, it might not be a good choice for you. Another con, hardwood is expensive. The material costs about three to eight dollars per square feet, and exotic varieties run up to about $15 a square foot. You can expect to pay an additional five to $12 for installation per square foot. So in total, the minimum cost of installing hardwood starts at about $8 a square foot. Engineer wood features a top of veneer of real wood backed by layers of cheaper plywood. This type of construction makes the flooring more stable and less susceptible to changes in temperature and humidity, unlike solid wood. Instead of plywood backing, some newer varieties have substrates made from recycled wood fiber mixed with stone dust to provide extreme dimensional stability. Engineered wood is a good idea for kitchens and basements, as well as for installation over in-floor heating systems. Engineered wood can be nailed, glued, or installed as a floating floor over a cushioned pad. More manufacturers are producing a self-locking or clickable engineered wood flooring that installs without glue or nails. Clickable flooring comes as planks or parquet squares and makes a really good DIY project. The pros for engineered wood is that it's durable, it's stable, and it comes in a variety of options to match your style. Changes in temperature and climate will not warp the plank. Engineered wood can be installed directly over an existing floor substrate. One of the biggest cons is that it's expensive, just like solid hardwood. Bamboo has become an increasingly popular choice because it's just like hardwood, except that it's not wood since bamboo is made of grass. Strands are glued together to form solid strips or engineered planks with tongue and groove joints, just like hardwood. It comes pre-finished with grain patterns that include flat, vertical, and woven. Flat grains display their intermittent growth nodes characteristic of the grass, whereas vertical grains pack the strands closely together to produce a fine-grained appearance. Woven types are woven. They have threaded, sinewy patterns. 
The pros to bamboo is that it's fast growing. It regenerates itself, it's tough as steel, and durable since it can resist swelling and contraction due to high heat and humidity. Because it comes from plants that are easy to grow and regenerate quickly, bamboo is considered a sustainable material and an environmentally friendly flooring choice. Bamboo is grown in controlled forests and can take three to five years to reach maturity as compared to old growth hardwoods, which can take from 100 to 120 years to reach full maturity. A con is that even though bamboo is sustainable, most are imported from Asia. So you need to include the energy required to transport the bamboo from Asia to the US to factor that into considering whether or not bamboo is a good choice for you. Expect to pay about three to eight dollars per square foot for bamboo flooring and an additional seven to twelve dollars per square foot for installation. Why would you specify bamboo? Because it's the look that you love. Moving on to laminate. Laminate flooring continues to be one of the most popular flooring choices around. It's easier to install than solid hardwood flooring and is much less expensive. Laminate floors get their name because they're composed of different wood-based materials that are laminated together, then topped with a wood grain photographic imprint on the face of each board. The more variation there is in the photorealistic prints, the more realistic laminate floors will look when laid down. Laminate flooring is similar to engineered wood in that a top layer is backed by layers of plywood or compressed fiber backing that is extremely stable. The big difference is that the top layer is not real wood, but a plastic coating applied over a photograph. The photorealism technology that's used produce lookalike finishes to real wood or even other materials such as stone, ceramic tile, or even stained concrete. The pros of laminate flooring is that there's a variety of styles, colors, and patterns available. It's easy to install, it's cost-effective if you're on a budget, and it's very low maintenance. Most are floating floor systems, meaning they can be installed directly over old existing flooring without glue or nails, so no tear out is necessary. They come in planks or tiles, and this is a very popular DIY option. You really can install these planks yourself, but for me, I don't overestimate my own skills and I always hire professional help, especially when it comes to those door jams and corners, which can get tricky. A major con for laminate flooring is that it warps when water sits on it. I have laminate installed in my own home and I specified it because I was budget conscious about my remodel. I love the grain finish. It almost has like a medium walnut stain to it and it matches the aesthetic of my home. But I have to admit, it's not the best for pets or plants. If one of the dogs accidentally soils the floor and I don't get to it in time, it can actually warp the plank and there's no way to fix it without tearing the entire floor up. But knowing that risk, would I specify laminate again? Absolutely. If you are budget conscious, it's really the best option out there. The quality varies and can start as low as $1 a square foot up to $7 a square foot. Installation can then tack on another $2 to $5 a square foot depending on the difficulty. Linoleum is gaining increasing popularity because it's considered the eco-friendly choice. It's made from all natural, renewable, biodegradable materials, including linseed oil and cork. Mineral pigments are added to produce rich, vibrant colors. Linoleum produces no harmful vapors and is considered a top environmentally friendly flooring choice. Linoleum comes as sheet goods designed for glue down installation and as laminated planks and tiles that install as a floating floor system. Most manufacturers provide a protective coating that prevents staining and helps the product stand up to a lot of foot traffic. If there is no protective coating, linoleum should be refinished every two years. The pro is that linoleum is very durable and can stand up to a lot of heavy foot traffic. It's very low maintenance. All you need to do is sweep it up or mop it to keep it clean and dust free. Linoleum is a very versatile flooring option with all sorts of patterns, colors, and styles to choose from. They're most often used in commercial settings like hospitals and schools, but they are making a really huge comeback in homes. One of the cons is that linoleum is made from all natural products, so it's more susceptible to damage from water and cleaning products. Since it comes in sheets or tiles, the seams must be sealed directly after installation and periodically resealed after that. If the maintenance is skipped, the floor loses its water resistance and can then curl up at the edges. Remember that linoleum is water resistant, but it's not waterproof. You can expect to pay about two to five dollars per square foot an additional seven to twelve dollars for installation. Cork comes from the bark of a tree. The bark is harvested every eight to 10 years and is considered a sustainable material. That means the tree is never destroyed, but it can regenerate new bark that can be harvested repeatedly. Cork has a warm natural appearance and is comfortable underfoot. It has a unique grain pattern with speckles and a honeycomb-like cellular structure. 
very much like the court coasters if you have them in your home, but it comes in larger tiles or planks with a laminate construction. It's a top wear layer glued to a stable core material. The pro to cork is that it's sustainable. It absorbs sound and vibrations and bounces back if it's accidentally dented. It has a non-slip surface that is great for wet areas like kitchens and bathrooms. One of the cons is that most cork floorings come pre-finished but they need to be resealed every couple of years to guard against stains and help seal out moisture. Non-toxic, water-based polyurethane and wax are good sealers for cork. Cork flooring is either glued down or installed as a floating floor. The material costs about two to six dollars per square foot and expect to pay another three to five dollars a square foot for installation. If you're on a budget, ceramic tile is the most popular choice for kitchens and bathrooms. There are so many shapes, sizes, colors, and textures of ceramic tile to make it easy to create customized looks. The cost varies widely, and you'll find tile priced anywhere from $1 to $100 per square foot. If you factor in the complimentary decorative trim pieces and mosaic inlays, that cost quickly can raise the price of total tile installation. You can expect to pay experienced tile setters about $4 to $12 per square foot to install the tile. Ceramic tile is made from a mixture of clay and shale that is backed and hardened in a kiln. Dry pigments added to the mixture give the tile a variety of earthy tonal colors. Ceramic tiles come in one of four basic types that I will detail and illustrate in the next slide. Some ceramic floor tiles come with an anti-slip finish that is great for traction when wet. Make sure that you specify ceramic tiles for floors in this case because there are some that are rated for walls and they're slippery when wet. The pro of ceramic tile is that it's cost effective. It comes in a variety of colors, patterns, trims, and accents. Since it's non-porous, there's no need to seal the ceramic tile. You can get creative with the application. It's waterproof, it's weatherproof, and it's slip resistant if you specify the right type. It combines the beauty and hardness of natural stone, but it costs less and it's easier to maintain. I have ceramic tile installed in my bathroom and kitchens, and it's so easy to wipe down with a wet Swiffer. The con is that ceramic tile can chip and crack if something heavy is dropped on it. Ceramic tile can also stain if it's unglazed. And of course, since it's manufactured, you don't get the look and feel of natural stone. It's great for kitchens, bathrooms, outdoor areas, and entries. High traffic areas that get a lot of wear and tear. Natural stone floor tile provides quality and luxury at a premium price. You'll pay anywhere from two to hundred dollars for marble, stone, granite, travertine, limestone, and expect to pay an additional installation cost of about five to ten dollars per square foot. The pro to natural stone is that it is luxurious. There's nothing like it on the market and it always looks high end. And of course, depending on your application, you can get very creative with it. I source natural stone about 95% of the time for my clients. If it's stained somehow, you can polish it down and reseal it if it's a honed or matte finish. One of the major cons to natural stone is that it requires some maintenance. Softer stones, such as sandstone and limestone, must be refinished every few years with a stone sealer. Harder stones, such as granite and marble, should be sealed every four to five years. Since they are all porous, they can stain. Hone and polished stone can be slippery when wet, so in this case, you want to choose a natural stone that has a little bit of a texture to the finish, especially for bathrooms or kitchens. Vinyl sheets and tiles are considered resilient flooring. They're soft and flexible underfoot. They're tough and durable and virtually maintenance-free. Vinyl comes in an array of colors and patterns at a really low cost. You can expect to pay as little as a dollar per square foot, but there are fewer style options among the less expensive types. Vinyl products are backed with a layer of felt or foam that offers an extra measure of comfort and safety. In general, the thicker the vinyl surface means a better quality and higher price. 
Thicker vinyl can have a textured surface that looks like stone or wood. Vinyl flooring has a wear layer on its upper surface that helps resist stains and scratches. You may have seen vinyl plank flooring that looks like laminate planks on the market today. Vinyl plank flooring is very durable, however it is a softer material than most laminates, hardwoods, and tiles. Since it is vinyl, these tiles and planks can be punctured easily with a sharp object. So if you have it installed in your kitchen and you accidentally drop a knife on it, just remember that the surface can be punctured. A pro is that vinyl is waterproof and it's inexpensive and it's a perfect DIY option. They can be made to look like wood or stone, they're very easy to clean, they're extremely durable and there is ample variety on the market. Since the top coat is impervious to water, it's great for kitchens, basements, bathrooms, or any area that you know there's a lot of wetness involved. It also absorbs sounds, so it's a lot quieter underfoot than tile or hardwood. A major con is that vinyl emits VOCs. That's volatile organic compounds, so it's not green by any means. If you've ever tried to remove vinyl tile yourself, I mean, it is a nightmare, especially when that adhesive has set in, it gets all over the place and it's very messy. It's not the greatest thing to drive up resale value as well. Vinyl is that one material that new homeowners rip out as soon as they purchase a new property. And since it's not eco-friendly, it's really difficult to recycle. Vinyl is best for a really quickie cosmetic facelift, especially if you're budget conscious and you're trying to change the look of your home quickly. Concrete is one of the hottest flooring options on the market today. I love the look of concrete, not just for industrial lofts, but really just for any type of contemporary setting. With a wide range of sealers and specialty stains currently on the market, plain and gray concrete can be stamped and stained to resemble polished marble, stone, brick, or really anything you dream up of. There's no limit to the design possibilities. That's the real beauty of concrete floors. One of the greatest pros of concrete is that it's long lasting, it's durable, and it's extremely low maintenance. It's also the perfect flooring for radiant heat. There's no grout lines, it's a seamless floor, it's so easy to clean, and there's so many ways for you to get creative with concrete. One of the cons of concrete is that it could feel cold. Concrete can take a beating, but it's not completely indestructible. So of course, if you drop something super heavy on it, it can crack or chip and the only way to repair it is to pour new concrete on top of it. The cost of concrete material and installation starts at about $5 a square foot. That price can go up depending on your style or decorative inlays that you add to the concrete. But in general, I love the look of really simple honed or polished concrete with a little pigment mixed in so I get the tone just right. Before we wrap up, I know you've seen cement tile and concrete tile on the market today. It's plastered everywhere on Pinterest, especially in bathrooms and kitchens. Cement tile and concrete tile is much more durable than ceramic tile. Since ceramic tile is made from a mixture of clay that is baked and hardened in a kiln versus cement tile and concrete tile that is made from material that is poured in a mold. The main difference is durability and longevity. Ceramic tile is the cheap option, cement and concrete tile is a more expensive option. Choosing flooring is a really big decision, but it doesn't have to be stressful. The best thing to do is to plan ahead and to ask yourself all those important questions before embarking on choosing the right flooring for your home. What is the function of the room? Who will be using the room? Do you have kids, pets? What vibe are you going for? What look are you trying to create? How much are you willing to spend on the material and installation? How much maintenance can you handle? And of course, what is your budget? Having figured all of that out, you'll be well on your way to picking the perfect flooring for your home. Here are a few of my personal design rules when it comes to flooring. If you have an open concept floor plan where there's no clear delineation of space, make sure you pick a flooring that you love since you'll be seeing it throughout your home. You can change the flooring from room to room. Not all bathrooms have to look alike. I actually prefer that all bathrooms have its own distinct look and style. Mind your transitions. The thickness of the material has everything to do with how it transitions from finish to finish. If one material is higher than the other, make sure you hire a contractor who knows how to float up one floor to meet the next. Engineered wood is one of the most common flooring types that I specify for my clients. Laminate would be next. For kitchens and bathrooms, natural stone is the most highly requested material for my projects. Next to that would be a cement or concrete tile. Ceramic tile is best when you have budget restrictions. And the most important design rule that you must remember, you can skimp on the materials but splurge on the installation. A great contractor can make a cheap product look like a million bucks. 
you can spend thousands of dollars on a really fancy material, skimp on the installation, and then your thousand dollar bathroom looks like you installed it yourself. I know that was a lot to digest, but I am here for you. Now that you get the overall gist of all the different flooring options that are out there, if you're undergoing a remodel or a future renovation, tell me what type of flooring you're leaning towards and why. Let me know in the comments below and I'll help you move more confidently in the direction that you're leaning towards. If you like this type of content, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you share this content if you found it helpful and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.